Well, David Wells uh, is certainly no stranger to me. He and I worked together for a few years at Broadway Church in Vancouver uh, about 10 years ago. But uh, he's also the general superintendent of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. But his, his real passion, apart from that, for many years has been chaplaincy, especially as it relates to uh, the Olympics. In his past Olympics, he was the manager of the multi-faith centers in the uh, Olympic villages. He was also um, the head of chaplaincy for the Christian delegation. And uh, he has a lot of um, remarkable memories from those most successful Olympics when, at least in gold, we owned the podium. Welcome, David. Hi, Jim. Were you impressed at the number of gold that we won? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you're hanging out with the uh, athletes and uh, you're a good Canadian boy who grew up playing hockey when you're five years old, I mean, there's some pretty highlight moments there. Yeah. I was sitting with some of my Vanock friends watching our first ever uh, gold medal at home, and uh, I don't think I left the ceiling untouched <laughs> <laughs> when we had that uh, f uh, freestyle skiing gold, you know. So yeah, it meant a lot. I mean, I'm a Canadian boy. I love winter sports, and uh, and, I'm and, you, and you were you were right there. You were in the villages. You had a kind of a, uh, a more access than the average Canadian. Uh, were the um, the athletes as much fans as they were participants as the other athletes were winning their golds? You know, uh, athletes, world-class athletes, are an interesting breed of people. They're so focused, and they're given their entire life for that period of time, really since they've been kids, to uh, that sport that they're involved in, that they really do zero in on their sport. They will go and cheer on uh, teammates at a specific occasion or whatever, but the focus is unbelievable. And it's uh, what makes them great. It's also sometimes uh, when they don't do so well or when their careers come to an end, what makes it such a trauma because they've really, you know, been so focused on that performance and uh, then how it goes really determines how they feel about life often, you know, yeah. not everybody, but most of them. I think uh, very few of us can understand, as you say, the focus that's required. You brought some pictures. Uh, walk us through these pictures, David. Let's take a look at these right now, just kind of in sequence, and tell us what we're, what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this is uh, right in the Vancouver Athletes Village, uh, looking out towards uh, the city of Vancouver along False Creek. There were uh, two Athletes Villages, one right in the city of Vancouver along False Creek, uh, BC Place in the background, and GM Place over there. And uh, then there was also the uh, Whistler Village up near uh, Whistler. And then this is our uh, team of folks that we pulled together, both from around Canada, but also around the world, who were the Canadian, or uh, the Christian chaplains working alongside of me. And uh, we had a great team of people with lots of background and experience. Um, we had chapels uh, twice a day in both villages. Uh, this is the Whistler gang getting together on a Monday night. I think that was February 22nd. Right in the middle is Kathy Kreiner Phillips, who worked real close with me, uh, a great gal. And uh, she was sharing her whole story of faith that started in Innsbruck when she won the gold medal in 1976, uh, seeing Jesus Christ Superstar and how it impacted her. And as she's going up on the lift before she skis her gold medal, uh, uh, trip down, you know. She's, she's praying to God to make her, himself real to her <laughs> as she's going up to ski what became her gold medal run. Uh, I was also involved with the Christian community as a whole, happy to be part of the folks that pulled together. And uh, I think the folks saw a quick picture there of some of the things we did uh, broader than the athletes' villages. This is prayer teams that were spread out, especially throughout the city of Vancouver, and they found loads of people that would uh, want to have them pray with them about things they're going through in life. Uh, one of the big hits, and the Salvation Army really led the way, bless them, is uh, 600,000 cups of hot chocolate, Jim. <laughs> oh my goodness. And uh, we heard wow. from the Premier, we heard from the organizing committee what a difference that made huh. to have all these Christian folks showing hospitality. And uh, that was our theme for the broader Christian community to be involved in the games was radical uh, hospitality to just show uh, that we had the love and life of Jesus within us and that we were there uh, to serve people and it had great impact. Was the chaplaincy uh, ministry serving mainly the athletes or was it uh, the, the teams that uh, provided the infrastructure for the athletes or all of the above? Yeah, the, the chaplaincy that's set up in the village 
Uh, the IOC mandates that the five major faith groups be represented. I was Van Ox manager for that, uh, the two multi-faith centers in the villages. And so that's focused on the folks that have access to the villages. It's uh, level four security. Not everybody walks in and out of those villages, but you do have several thousand between the two villages, athletes, team officials, and then almost uh, equal numbers of volunteers that are from not just around Vancouver, but they were from around the world. Well, you get to actually be the pastoral presence for those thousands of people for those uh, two and a half weeks during the Olympics and another uh, couple weeks during the Paralympics. And it's just amazing uh, the interactions you have based on athletes going through challenging times or athletes, it's just a regular pattern of theirs to practice their faith. They're coming in the morning to study the Bible and have prayer with somebody and away they go play their hockey game. You know, we had several of the U.S. women's team drop in in Vancouver. We had bobsledders drop in uh, regularly up in Whistler and, and you're there for them. You get to be present for them. But then you're also there for volunteers. They're living a different lifestyle. They're there to serve and, uh, and they go through things and they've got questions about how their family's doing. Uh, of course, when we had the tragedy of uh, the passing away of uh, the Georgian loser. Suddenly the whole thing shifted in both villages where uh, a lot of people were asking a lot of deep questions. And we had to be there to engage, to comfort. We had weeping people and uh, you just click into a mode of uh, being there in presence and prayer. Um, the organizing committee uh, did a great job, I think, of responding, but part of their uh, response was to come to me, say, Dave, we've got to be able to respond uh, to the people in the village, and uh, we set up books of condolences and special memorial rooms in both villages, and uh, we saw hundreds in both villages come and have their private time, their private place. Mm. Um, you know, if you don't have that arrangement, that setup, because every so often, because I've been involved in this for years, you know, you hear people that say, well, wasting the taxpayer's money or yada, 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 you mm -hmm. know? And uh, it's just that that's a village. These people are living their lives and their lives don't shut down just because of the Olympics or the Paralympics. They've got issues, they've got things they're walking through. Then you throw in something so worldwide, like the tragic death mm -hmm. Uh, of Nodar and and people got to have a place to go. They, it's just like, you know, the church on the street corner or the spiritual leader that someone would go to and talk to during a time of crisis. You're there for them. Now, Dave, with all of this um, involvement, especially after this uh, young man died, and you had to do all of this scrambling and this organizing, did you have a staff to help you with all of this? 